Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for the Autodesk Lead the Way virtual event. I am Anthony Governanti and I am a Technical Marketing Manager here at Autodesk focusing on the construction industry. The AEC industry is undergoing a major transition from paper-based linear processes to a collaborative digital approach with Building Information Modeling or BIM. BIM is not just a tool but a process that supports virtual design and construction methodologies pulling all stakeholders together throughout the entire design and construction process and beyond to the operations and maintenance of the building. This session will explore how to implement building information modeling in construction firms, a topic that we expect will be timely and important given several industry and technology trends that we are experiencing today. In a moment we will go over these trends as well as take a deeper dive into the process that we hope all of you can start to leverage immediately as you move ahead with leveraging BIM on your next construction project. If you are new to using BIM, or if you are a seasoned veteran, we hope you will find this session useful and insightful. So without further delay, let us begin. Let us first take a look through some of the major business and technology trends we are facing today that will impact how we execute our construction projects. It is no secret that you're dealing with a highly competitive environment. Thanks to the global financial crisis, there are fewer available projects with more contractors vying for them. Owners and governments increasingly demand that you deliver their complex projects faster and at a lower cost. You need to provide more accurate cost estimates and material quantities to ensure that you stay on budget. And because project timelines are shrinking, you have to manage projects with as few time and cost intensive RFIs and change orders as possible. In addition, Owners and governments are increasingly savvy and expect you to have new qualifications before awarding the work. The construction industry is realigning in a fundamental way. That is, construction firms like yours are driving integrated practices in more effective production cycles by taking more control of the supply chain. The industry is under pressure to reduce waste, both to help protect the environment and to increase profitability. Over the past several years, it has been well documented that the construction industry produces 30% waste. That means one out of every $3 spent on projects is wasted. When you consider construction as a $7 trillion global industry, that's a tremendous amount of wasted money. There are several ways construction firms are trying to reduce this waste. For example, they're driving more efficient use of materials and labor by implementing prefabrication strategies, especially multi-trade prefabrication. Overall, the construction industry has been looking to adopt the lean practices and approaches that have worked well in the manufacturing sector. We've just talked about the trends impacting the construction industry increased competition pressure, supply chain realignment, and lean practices. Now, how do you succeed in an environment today? You have to drive effective execution of your work through all phases of a project, not only to increase your margins and achieve profitability, but also to satisfy your clients and shareholders. Our construction customers are talking to us about how these issues are leading the industry to an intersection point a point where they need more integrated team structures to execute projects more efficiently and effectively, and now the technology is available to help them do so. Digital information is critical in today's marketplace. Using that information to design, visualize, and simulate projects is what makes BIM so powerful. Building information modeling is an intelligent 3D model-based process that provides insight for creating and managing building and infrastructure projects faster, more economically, and with less environmental impact. Autodesk BIM solutions help you profit from greater project insight. For example, more accurate documentation and the ability to simulate projects before they are built results in higher quality outcomes. Save time and money with improved collaboration and coordination of even the most complex projects and use analysis to optimize the sustainability of your project over its life cycle. The rich, coordinated information in the model enables a better understanding of a project and helps you create value at every step in the process to better plan, design, build, 
and manage buildings and infrastructure projects. BIM starts with a 3D model, but it's more than that. It's intelligent 3D. The model from a BIM design process not only represents the design, but also contains the underlying information, data about the objects in the design such as type, size, material, and so on. What makes Autodesk BIM solutions really exciting is what you can do with the information within the model. Win more work and build stakeholder approval more easily using powerful visualizations. Simulate multiple construction alternatives more quickly and accurately. Keep documentation accurate no matter how many times the design changes. Reduce costs and time by identifying costly design conflicts virtually before construction begins. Improve team collaboration and more easily manage project data across extended teams and external partners. And finally, provide a valuable digital asset to the project owner for operations and management. BIM is transforming the global AEC industry. BIM is helping AEC professionals and owners in every segment of the industry to realize benefits at every point in the project lifecycle. We are now seeing BIM go far beyond the building model to infrastructure design, concept studies, community reviews, construction trailers, and facility maintenance training. The shift to BIM has firmly taken hold, and firms around the world are already seeing returns from their investment. In the 2009 and 2010 McGraw-Hill Business Value of BIM surveys in the U.S. and Europe, firms cited better construction outcomes, reduced errors and emissions, reduced rework, and winning and retaining business as key benefits. The rich information available through BIM provides ability to plan more effectively, design more intuitively, build more accurately, and manage more efficiently. When you execute work, there are a number of common elements, and at the center is the project, the organizing element tying everything together. By putting a model at the center of your project and gaining additional levels of information, creating a building information model, you'll gain deeper insight into the project's costs, schedule, and constructability. Connecting the processes and technologies you're already using today, you can drive a much more efficient and less risky execution of project work. With more information, you work smarter, make better decisions on how to execute work across all areas. So now that we have an understanding of the challenges we all face in today's market, understand how BIM can help construction firms navigate those challenges and be more profitable and efficient. Let's now take a look at how to implement BIM in your firm and provide sound tactics for ensuring you get a return on your investment the first time and every time you execute a project using BIM. Before any plan can be developed, it is very important that we gain executive or top-level support for the implementation of BIM. This may seem obvious, but is a step many firms skip or do not emphasize enough. As we mentioned earlier, BIM is a process that enables some great benefits both in efficiencies gained, but also money saved or profits earned. To that end, it could and will be a change for many people in the firm in how we go about winning, planning for, and executing our projects. Thus, we will need the support of decision makers in our firm when difficult decisions need to be made or costs need to be incurred that may or may not have a direct effect on the current project. The decision also needs to align and tie into the business goals of the company. This will further ensure that it has the support of the organization because the success or failure of the implementation can be directly tied to the corporate goals and initiatives. Lastly, but just as important, don't do this alone. There are resources available to firms who are taking this step, whether it is a local Autodesk certified partner or other consultants who do these implementations every day. The point is, leverage these resources to ensure you have the right talents and capabilities at hand when you need them and in the amount you need. Once you have the top-level support and corporate buy-in, now it is time to actually create a BIM plan, also known as a BIM execution plan. Again, there are many resources out there that provide the framework needed to create a plan. Many go into a great depth of detail, with flowcharts and diagrams in template form to leverage for planning. 
while others are more high level and simply provide guidelines. Also, the authors vary just as much. Penn State, Indiana State, and many other academic institutions provide documents born from many years of theoretical and practical research. Industry organizations, such as GSA, ASHRAE, and the AGC, also have their own plans that can be leveraged. The local resources mentioned earlier will also have versions of plans that they have developed through experience in working with other firms. They all have one thing in common. Have a plan and use it. Next, and also very important, is that we need to define what success is for you and your firm. This may seem obvious, but it is important that this be specific to you and your firm's capabilities, the types of projects you execute, and ties back to the corporate goals we discussed earlier. It is also important that we do not do too much the first time. I have personally been involved with many BIM implementations, and I have seen some that have failed. The ones that have failed have several common elements, not having a plan, having a bad plan, or having a plan that had no definition of success or failure. This is where defining the success will really help avoid these pitfalls. An example of selecting attainable goals and measurements of success would be to limit the first use of BIM to a specialization, or something that you can control easily. For example, if a general contractor self-performs the MEP system's installation, then that would be a great place to focus the BIM use on, and something that can be easily measured within the context of the project, i.e. reduced X number of RFIs with duct and steel coordination by leveraging a BIM, etc. In comparison, the opposite might be use BIM for an entire project. In this example, what and how will the information model be used? And how do we measure if it was successful? At the end of the day, we could create a BIM and say, yes, we did it, and check the complete box. But have we really accomplished anything or delivered any specific benefit to the project by doing so? Being specific and measurable will further ensure success and also provides opportunity to recognize when something is not working and take action to fix it. Now it's time to select a team. This is equally as important as the previous steps as it is where the rubber meets the road for our project. These will be individual co contributors who will be responsible for executing the plan most. Here we want to search for individuals in your firm that are eager and willing to participate. Nothing will derail an implementation faster than a personality on the team that is set in their ways and is not open to the changes necessary for BIM to succeed. We also want people who are willing to share their experience in learning to be the champions of the process moving forward. By doing so, you can create a snowball effect. Once other teams see how these folks are succeeding and the experiences are shared, they will want the same and will be eager to try and leverage BIM on their projects too. It is also a good practice to align the professional goals of these individuals with the success of the BIM execution plan or the use of BIM on the project. This way they are both professionally and monetarily motivated for its success. Project selection is also important. We want to select a project that is typical for the type of work your firm does. This way the practices and lessons learned from the first project can easily be applied to all future projects. Conversely, avoid selecting a one-off project, something you happen to win and are executing, but diverges from the core values of the firm. Although these are great projects to have, especially if you are moving that core value towards something new, they are not the best candidate to implement BIM for your first time. Lastly, but no less important, engage all of the parties involved and make them part of the planning and execution process. Make sure the owner is aware of how and why you are using BIM, assuming they aren't the ones who required it in the first place, as well as the extended team with subcontractors and other trades and consultants involved. The simplest step in the process? Put the plan into action and start work using BIM as the plan dictates. As you are executing, it will be necessary to make adjustments as we go. It is unreasonable to think that we got all the contingencies and options laid out in our executions plan. 
and it is also unreasonable to be so rigid in following the plan that we cannot make changes as needed to avoid issues. It is important to realize that the plan won't be perfect the first time and that it will need to be flexible. But at the same time, we want to stick to a plan as much as we can, and thus making adjustments or course corrections as we go is key. We also need to document the changes that we made, and document why they were made. This information will be critical in later stages, as we'll need to understand why decisions were made, and if the change could be a permanent one, or was due to circumstances that were specific to the project or other situations that will not exist beyond this instance. Lastly, we need to take what we have learned, revise the plan accordingly, and expand the implementations. This expansion could be just in scope of how BIM is being used on the project, i.e. use it on the next phase or an additional service, or can be expansion within your firm to start executing other projects with BIM. Simply put, the plan will be a living document that will evolve to the point where instead of being a new process, it is now a standard process, and you would not do it any other way. There we have it, seven simple steps to implement BIM in a construction firm. Use these steps and the guidance we provided with them to help ensure your success and your firm's success with leveraging BIM to win, plan, and execute work today. We made mention of several resources today for planning and executing your BIM implementations. Here are links to find out more information on those resources, including the different BIM execution plans. In conclusion, we hope you came away from today's Implementing BIM for Construction Lead the Way virtual event with a better understanding of what the industry challenges are today, what BIM is and how it applies to the construction industry to meet those challenges, and a clear process for implementing BIM in your firm. Additional information about this and many other topics specific to the Autodesk Construction Solution can be found here please take some time to visit our Construction Solution Center, where you can ask a construction expert a question, view and participate in more presentations like this one, and find more information on the Autodesk Construction Solution. Thank you for joining us here at the Autodesk Lead the Way virtual event, Implementing BIM for Construction.